How did the Packers type come to be? How did we figure it out? Ross Uglum from Packer Report joins us to talk about his journey in trying to figure out the kinds of players the Packers tend to like. And of course, we have to talk about some of those players, some of the places he and I disagree on these players. All of that on today's show. You are Locked On Packers, your daily Green Bay Packers podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. You are Locked On Packers, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. I'm Peter Bukowski, and I cover the Packers for The Leap, a newsletter I would love for you to subscribe to. Follow me on Twitter, Peter underscore Bukowski. Follow the podcast on Twitter, Locked On Packers. Like us on Facebook. Subscribe to the podcast, iTunes, Spotify, Google Podcasts, wherever you find podcasts, you will find Locked On Packers, the number one Packers podcast on the internet. And the show for fans who know what happened, they want to know why and how. Today's episode brought to you by your friends at Monopoly Go. I admit it, I have a competitive side, and it is a big fan of Monopoly Go. The mobile hit twist on a classic Monopoly game. So join your friends and download Monopoly Go now, free on the Apple Store or Google Play. As we get ready for the NFL Draft, a week from now, we will have likely at least one Packers first round pick. Maybe more. Who knows? So I wanted to have our pal Ross Uglam on because he is deep, deep, deep in the Packers types, the preferences, all that stuff. And, and I thought it was a good time to have a conversation about that because as we talked about on the show the other day, I know not everyone is into it. I know not everyone believes in it. And so I wanted Ross to come on and explain his journey through all of this because what we try and do here, what they try and do at Pack Report, the Pack Report Draft Guide, which is an excellent resource. I highly recommend you go get it. Um, it's about helping the fans feel like they have an idea of who's on the Packers' radar, even if it's not being reported, because we just, like, we have information. We, we see the trends. The trends are obvious in a lot of cases. And so if you can get to 80, 85% certainty on the first three rounds, four rounds, I mean, that's pretty good. So let's talk to our pal, Ross. Joining me now, our old pal from Packer Report, Ross Uglum. And Ross, we will argue about offensive linemen later. Um, I want to I want to talk about uh, Packers types because this has been a thing that has been um, much discussed now on, on the X machine. And I thought you put it really well in a, in a tweet earlier where you were explaining your evolution through trying to figure out, trying to predict, because that's ultimately what you and I are trying to do, trying to give um, our audiences a more narrowed down view of the kinds of players the Packers tend to draft. And so can you just walk us through your own evolution in someone who has studied this and, and tried to figure out what's going on here? Yeah. So, um, you know, definitely uh, early on, you know, went through the whole RAS thing as far as kind of discovering Kent's work. And, um, you know, that really led to some uh, research into, cause, cause Kent would do this thing where he'd consolidate the entire class. And then he started backfilling it for, you know, previous classes and you'd see all this green and green, you know, for those of you that don't follow relative athletic score, like green is, I think seven and above or eight and above one of the two. And then five to seven or five to eight is, um, you know, yellow and then sub five, which basically if you're because the data either goes back to 1983 or 1987, like if you're a 50th percentile athlete for 1987 to now, you're probably about a 35th percentile athlete in today's NFL because right. everything's bigger, stronger, faster, you know, um, et cetera. And, and you can have the debate about eras, whatever, but. Um, you know, constantly you're seeing 9.9 .9 RAS guys every single year. And that would be more of a coincidence if it wasn't, no, these athletes are literally getting, you know, bigger, stronger, faster. So I just kind of went in and, and looked and, um, you know, tried to make data points that made sense, developed the RAS shortlist when I was at Cheesehead TV, which was basically, you know, I'd pick a number over a, a number of years that made sense. So, hey, the Packers, you know, over the last five years, 81% of their picks have had an RAS of 8.3 or better. And here are all the guys that we have confirmed numbers for that are 8.3 or better that are, you know, consensus top 200 players. Yeah. Here's the list. 
there's a really good chance 80 percent of the guys they draft are going to be on that list and it was right. a good list yeah you know and and um you know but then i, I started uh really last year when i made the move and, and i have nothing but nice things to say about you know the the, the guys over at cheesehead tv we're still super friendly with them um uh, love Aaron, love Corey, love Al. Al really, I mean, was part of the reason I got you know kind of my break in the business. No, no disrespect over there at all, but I I did maybe to just be blunt for purely financial reasons, move over and start doing the Packer Report draft guide on our own. It's been tremendously successful. I started working with Jake Stack, and 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 Jake took my concept even further and said, okay, let's look at these position by position. What do they care about? Right. So broad jump is important at this position but they really care about three cone at this position okay well they're not taking cornerbacks that are 189 pounds or less basically at all that has to be something we pay attention to and then i found out you know because like you have um last year all oh, the packers love darnell Wright. okay uh or two years ago the packers i think daniel falele makes a ton of sense it's like six nine three eighty I was like, Daniel Falele is a Raven, which is actually what happened. And, and, and that's not to pump up my own chest, but like the Packers are not taking a six foot nine, 380 pound tackle. Now, some of the guys that you want to have a discussion about are that is Daniel Falele is the extreme of what right. I'm talking about. A hundred percent. I'm fully willing to admit that. But, you know, then I, I started to look at certain positions, right? They're not taken and, 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 I want to preface this by saying one quick thing, and it, it it sort of informs the whole discussion. I know I'm talking for a while here, but um, I'm enjoying the monologue. Really where the, the Packers get real serious. Number one, round one. And people say, well, what about Quay and Devante? They were a weird position and an old. From athletic profession. Yeah, Devante was. You know, Quay was, was right in all the stuff you'd want. Right. And and frankly, so was Wyatt strictly from a testing perspective, what they like at the defensive tackle position. He was everything. He was just old. Right. So some of the ancillary things, but you look at my gosh, um, the one honest outlier is that Jair was short and that kind of, but you look at Darnell Savage, you look at Rashawn Gary, you look at Lucas Van Ness, you look at Eric Stokes, you look at the guys they actually take in round one. I'll even throw, uh, you know, two times second round pick and 33rd overall pick Christian Watson in there. He's what they do. Yeah. And 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 I think the rest of that um, really is pretty darn solid in rounds one through four. After round four, they'll go to the scratch and dent store. They'll they'll start doing <laughs> stuff that that. Um, you know, they'll, they'll grab the Gucci bag, but maybe, you know, it's, it's not the, the, the label isn't quite on center, right? The, yeah. It's from so, Canal Street. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. So that's when you'll, and they'll, Hey, they'll hit Carl Brooks. Basically it, it could not have been around one through four Packer based on some testing stuff. Kingsley and Igbari basically would not have been around one through yeah. four green Bay Packer based on some testing stuff, but you start getting into round five and then you start talking about, you know, well, Yash Nyman, well, Caleb Jones, well, Luke Tenuta, they will scratch and dent store the heck out of UDFA, guys off other got people's rosters, practice squad coaching. Too. Like Xavier right. McKinney would never have been drafted oh, by the Green Bay Packers, never in a million no, years. 100%. And say, same thing goes for like a Ladarius Gunter. They would never draft right. a corner that wow. slow. But they'd never want to play a corner that slow either. They just had to when they did right. that. But, but they liked enough of his tape where it's like, He's got to come into camp. He's, you know, we like him enough. Yeah. And then it was like, well, he keeps making plays in camp. So now we got to play him. Then it's like, everyone else is down. Now he's got to cover Julio yeah. Jones. So um, <laughs> I still can't believe that was a thing. Right. But, but really this, the studies that I've done in conjunction with Jake in conjunction with the Packer report draft guide is really, I would say round one has been super specific and, and then really rounds one through four is where they kind of do business how they do business now are there exceptions yes Jaden reed was a slight exception um mari rogers was a major exception jay uh, Brian Gutekind said they did not consider him a receiver they considered him something else and that also yeah. between you and i and everyone listening that was a rogers favor that was a you asked for a slot receiver we haven't gone and gotten randall cobb yet yeah. but here look we're, we're getting you a slot receiver look at this guy and he's friends with randall cobb to boot 
should have just drafted Nico Collins. But anyway, um, <laughs> the a Packers type yeah. all day. Right. And, th- and there have been exceptions. And I think, you know, slot receiver is a specific one. I'd be interested if slot corner is a specific one. Like, do they because like Rake been wondering Stratt, about that. They're right there at 41 or 25, or however you want to say. Like the 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 lighter corners and almost the guys like Kamari Laster and Rakestra are super interesting to me because they do not qualify to play outside cornerback for the Packers. Maybe Nickel's different. Maybe they treat Nickel the same way. They haven't. Do you really though. see the Packers drafting a four six five corner though? Like Kamari Lasseter ran slow, slow. Oh, I mean, literally, again, only if they're going to demand him to play in the slot. And would they spend the forty first overall pick on that? I wouldn't. Right. So, um, you know, there's always exceptions that prove every rule. But man, round one through four is really where they prefer to do business the way they do business, and. And you can certainly throw your Jaden Reeds and your Jay Sternbergers and your Richard Rogers is at me, but I can throw four names of the way they do business back at you. I mean, and that's, that's how the whole thing works, right? Is we're trying to tell you about the 80 to 85% of what they do. And if you want to argue back to the, with the 10 or 15% of what they do, I, I can't kind of help you sometimes. Right. All right. Back for more with our pal Ross Uglum in just a second here on Locked on Packers. Let's get straight to the point. You want to grow your portfolio to deal with the rising cost of inflation or to pay off your debt with your mortgage. Pretty much anything standing in the way of you and your financial freedom, right? With Yahoo Finance, you can get access to the news, the data, the tools, whatever you need to help reach that financial freedom. When it comes to your financial future, you think you've done it all. You've saved, you've researched, you've invested, you've done all that you can. Now you need to take those investments to the next level by using every financial tool you can use. And the most important one, Yahoo Finance. For more than 25 years, Yahoo Finance has been the brand behind every great investor. Whether you're a seasoned investor or you're looking for extra guidance, Yahoo Finance gives you all the tools and data you need in one place. Securely link your brokerage accounts for a unified view of your wealth, including 401ks and other investments. A comprehensive perspective is what sets apart great investors. And it's how Yahoo Finance ensures you have the insight to look at your wealth in its entirety. For comprehensive financial news, analysis, Visit the brands behind every great investor, yahoofinance.com. That's the number one financial destination, yahoofinance.com. You're not going to forget the name because I'm going to say it again, yahoofinance.com. And thanks to everyone who makes Locked On Packers their first listen every day. Are you watching Fox Sports or ESPN on your TV all day? Have you ever had to turn down the volume because of all the shouting? Make the switch to Locked On Sports today. A free 24-7 sports streaming channel programmed for you every day to bring you the biggest stories without all the screaming. Locked on Sports Today brings you the can't-miss analysis, opinions, and news streaming 24-7 on YouTube or the free Amazon Fire TV channels app. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Right, it's like, okay, just because it doesn't work 100% of the time doesn't mean it's not a useful tool for us as we look at these players. Um, I, I, you and I have gone back and forth on the, the too tall, too heavy discussion. Like, but you and I agree. Amarius Mims is not a Packer. Like that's one of those things where I'm just like, there's no eight starts. Like he's an outlier in every possible way. He, yes. He's taller than they All like. He's heavier than they like. And he does not have near the experience that they usually like. But my thing has been, there are very few guys that we have seen come through the draft who are six, seven, six, eight who also have the sort of agility that the Packers tend to prioritize at that position. And so I do wonder, especially in this climate where they may be moving Zach Tom to center, if they would say, Hey, Tyler Guyton, uh, or, or some of these other like Patrick Paul, who's huge. If, if that makes more sense now, because they are athletically as gifted as they tend to like at that position. I I, I just, I, I wonder about that. Yeah, I think it's a valid thing, you know, and 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 sometimes uh, nuance is difficult on X or Twitter or whatever. But you know, I, I just I've got the the thing pulled up here, you know, my 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 black and white chart, and um, 
I, I did throw, and that's 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 like the ever evolving aspect of it, right? Too. Um, that was something that I just talked about with, with we were just talking in the group chat where you know Jake had figured out some, I think some three cone stuff and some shuttle stuff that's important. I had obviously figured out some height and weight stuff that certainly appears to be important. And then it was like, golly, Bakhtiari played a ton. Spriggs played a ton. Yeah. Tom played a ton. Sean Ryan played a ton. Do they care? Yeah. I mean, after doing the the, the yeah. research, they absolutely He did the same thing care. with receivers. That was one of those things that had not really been talked about. And then it turns out, no, they really like guys that have produced in a big time way, not once, but twice. Like almost all yeah. of the receivers they take high have produced two high quality seasons in college. And and Christian is the obvious outlier there, but North Dakota State could have ran the ball. ball. <laughs> yeah, so that's a whole different thing. But no, and I think there's some validity what you're saying. For I mean, for example, right, if they were interested or at a point, if they had quote unquote stayed bad, which I now that it's uh, you know draft season, I do sometimes fantasize about them staying bad. But then you wouldn't have the answer that you have, you know, at the quarterback position, right? But like. Alt hits their stuff. Well, he is six eight. Pert near six nine. Yeah. So it's like, okay, if Green Bay had stayed bad and they're picking at seven, and it goes quarterback, 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 MHJ neighbors, and they're staring at Joe Alt. Would they care that he's six nine? Now, based on what I've heard, Ross, they really like Joe Alt. Yeah, I mean, good luck with that. I mean, not, not that they're right. going to be able to draft him, but like right. that there, there, there may have been at some point a pipe dream to move up because they, they liked him that much. That was just, it was just, you know, sure. th things I hear. Sure. And, and so, <laughs> and, and again, a lot of my stuff, I'll be honest with you. Like I have some, and I've, I've never claimed otherwise. I haven't. Right. Um, I'm not deep connected into what's going on in green Bay. I have a couple of sources here and there. I hear things as you do probably to a lesser degree than you do. My stuff really guys is based on research and stuff yeah. that any jerk can get off the internet. My table of all of the tackles that they've taken since 1996 is Googleable information. Yeah. <laughs> now this is, this is either pro day heights and weights or combine heights and weights. So it's a, it's a little bit different than like listed heights and weights by the teams, but that's where this info comes from, which is, Hey, this is how they've done business in the Ron Wolf to Ted Thompson yeah. to Brian Gutekunst era. And I mentioned that, this on the radio the other day though, Ross, like in the middle of a Super Bowl window, Ron Wolf drafted John Michaels, who is six, seven. So in the first round, so it's just like that's just a, an interesting data point that I've that I've I know what was it 30 years ago? So like yeah, 1996. I, I understand. Little. Yeah. 300 Skinny. on the nose. He was he was the, like a big tight end almost. I think he if I, my memory serves, he was a former tight end, a lot like someone like Tyler Guyton. I, I liked your theory though, that one of the reasons why they do it the way that they do it is so that if someone needs or struggles a tackle, they can fail into guard. And the Packers cross train everybody anyway, like Dirk Sherrod. Right. No one was saying Derek Sherrod should play guard. He but came he to Green Bay and he played guard. <laughs> yeah. And it's sort of like, okay, that's that's an th that theory kind of like knocked me on my ass a little bit because I was like, oh, and if they if that's the reason why, to me, that's a smart reason. Like that's a I like that reason. Yeah, I agree. And that's why I actually like the super packer to me is actually Fa Tanu. Mm. I because like Fa Tanu, I think with his who you'd have natural. to sell me on. I just, I, I don't, I didn't love it, but that's, that's fine. So his natural leverage to me, and then he has like tackle arms. He has these enormous arms. I just think he is one of, I think he can play four spots and you have two other linemen who can play five. That's why I think like five town is the super packer. Like I think Elton Jenkins can play all five. Yep. I think they have the spot for him. I think Zach Tom can play all five. Yeah. Then you bring in a guy like five town who I think can play prop, probably not center. I, who knows, but I, I think could easily make a transition to guard and could play both tackle spots in a pinch. Um, he, he's kind of the, the super packer. Um, Jordan Morgan is also, I think kind of a super packer as well out of, uh, Arizona three years left tackle elite pass protector, pack 12 kid, you know, and, and that's, that's another thing, you know, that I, I talk about almost ad nauseum. 
we don't have access obviously to their draft room, but they Nothing trust has. the hell out of their mountain West and pack 12 people. Yeah. I mean, you go and look and I'll, I'm, I'll, I'll just go top hundred picks. Luke Musgrave, Oregon state, um, Sean Ryan, UCLA that's West coast. Didn't do it in 2021, which was kind of odd. Jordan Love, Utah State. And that class kind of sucked. Yeah, but <laughs> but but Jordan Love, Utah State, 2020. That's definitely a West Coast uh, scout, no question about it. Um, then it it was took took a while, but boy, were they heavy on it in the late TED times. Um, yeah, they were. Kevin King, Washington. Kenny Clark, UCLA. Kyler Fackrell, Utah State. Demarius Randall, Arizona State. Ty Montgomery, Stanford. Devonte Adams, Fresno State. Yeah. Dayton Jones, UCLA. David Bakhtiari, Colorado. That wasn't a top 100 pick. I cheated just a little bit. But then immediately before that, Nick Perry, USC. So they trust their West Coast people. My kind of point is, if I am right and they agree with me, and we could both end up being wrong, but like if they're in on Jordan Morgan or Fatanu. You're not going to hear nothing from me because that means that they've got the Sam seal stamp of approval. And that goes for, you know, a lot of the, the, the pass rush guys from UCLA. It goes for a bunch of offensive weapons from Washington. There are a ton of West coast guys that are super interesting. Goes for Marshawn Lloyd running back out of USC, who I love Um, the, the West coast kind of stamp of approval uh, they trust the hell out of you're you're hurting uh, me by not mentioning guys. the one name that I have been obsessed with for weeks, and that is Kingsley Suamataia. Yeah, the BYU kid who used to be at Oregon, and he's he's kind of a super packer too, in that he's outside of my realm for tackle for, of what you know we've talked about. I like he's like three pounds too heavy, right? But he's outside of the realm. He's he's right. heavier than the heaviest. Right. Because if we're talking about median or mean, he's well outside of that. Like I would say the most Packersy Packer that ever Packered was probably Bulaga at 6'5, 314. That's like yeah. their that's the, that's the that's the platonic ideal of a yeah, Packer right. Tackle. That's that's their guy. Bulaga, Chad Clifton, Alan Barbara, that's their their like their guy, right? So Suamati is interesting because Super athletic. Did he run agilities? Do we actually know those for him? We we don't have public public numbers on that, but that doesn't and mean I, he didn't, he didn't they test might. for teams. Right, they like, might. I don't know. But, but he's an interesting classic Packer in that historically, they would move him to guard. His, historically, they would, they would probably move him to guard. And however multiple years starter he is at tackle with that girth, like that's Packers all pro guard. That's your TJ Lang, your Josh Sitton, your JC Treader, your whatever. That's kind of what Kingsley is to me. But I'm willing to talk about what you think his agilities might be because that the shuttle seems to be like as much as three cone is important. We talk about it. They seem to be obsessed with that short shuttle for tackles. And for, that is a tackle metric with offensive linemen. If you want a good offensive lineman, there are certain tackles every year. You go, OK, if they hit this number. Cool. You're all in. And by the way, Zach Tom hit that number. Um, and Josh Norris has been an, an evangelist of it. And so, like, I get it. But but like th- going back to the point that I made about Tyler Guyton, if you look at his agility numbers, he he hits the numbers the Packers tend to like in agilities. And the only guys who have done it at his size over the last five drafts, it's him and Joe Alt. They're the only guys as big as him who have been as agile as him. So you look at the percentiles and you go, okay, not super impressive, but at his size, it's crazy impressive to be able to move the way that he does, which is why to me, I think <laughs> hasn't started quite as many games as you would like, but all the other numbers, if you just, if like, if you took away the height part of it, all the athletic numbers, he hits, which is why I, maybe not a super packer, but I still feel like he's a packer. All right, we'll finish up with Ross Uglum. Here in just a second on Locked on Packers. I've been told I'm a competitive person. And I know that's true. I don't need anyone else to validate that. For me, I am. I'm really competitive. And my competitive side is a big fan of Monopoly Go. I'm sure you've heard of it. It's been downloaded over 150 million times. It's a great twist on Monopoly where you play 
on not one, but hundreds of Monopoly boards in crazy locations, building up amazing cities that bring you big money. And the best part is messing with your friends. But now you can also heist their vaults for riches for yourself. And the leaderboards show you who the biggest Monopoly tycoon is. But it's not just my competitive side that loves it. You can team up with friends and people around the world in time tournaments to earn huge rewards. So get in the game and join your friends. Download Monopoly Go now free on the App Store or Google Play. And thanks to everyone who makes Locked On Packers their first listen every day. Locked On has launched the first ever national sports 24-7 streaming channel on YouTube. And now it's also available on the Amazon Fire TV and the free Fire TV channels app. Locked On Sports Today is here for you 24-7, covering the top sports stories of the day with the local experts of Locked On, plus our national shows covering every league. Find Locked On Sports Today now available on the free Fire TV channels app. Yeah, and, and that's why, and I've said it before, like, I I don't think they'll take him, but there's 31 other teams. If I sit here and say I don't think they'll take him, that I don't know how much value that actually provides. Guyton, on, to me, on, is is a tape issue for me. Um, I think he's a, I think he's a lottery ticket. I mean, he's got a, he's got a second round grade for, for me. Um, and I don't want to do the, the cop out thing of like the PFF grades, but that that's kind of like, his PFF grades, and he didn't yeah, really play didn't at, T- at TCU, 66.2 in 2022 and 63.7 in 2023. He's just an average. And, and the tape shows so, some of that stuff. I mean, he is not ready. And and fine. Look, like, I get it, man. 6'7", 330, ball of clay that actually clears their agility marks. I can see why that is attractive. If I'll just say this. If you think this team's ready to win, and your honest to God plan is Tyler Guyton at right tackle and Zach Tom at center week one, 2024. I am horrified. I, he, he's not to me. He's just not ready. I'm ready for like, dude, if but you, but if he's not ready, you don't have to play him. That's the thing. Like if he's not ready, leave Zach. Tom they just signed your boy. Okay. But he, maybe he's a guard. <laughs> maybe Andre, Andre Dillard's a guard. Not at all in the NFL yet, but what I'm saying Maybe maybe that's the reclamation project. Is let's cross train him. Let's see what he's got. Maybe, um, but with Guyton, I, I, we've we've we spend a lot of time on this. I, I want to get so you sure. you have you have done the you've done the work. I know you've watched the yeah. tape. You've got you've got your guys. Um, which year was it? Where you were awesome? Where your big board was awesome? 2019? 2018, which is 2018, hilarious. You were just because. like just incredibly dialed. So, yeah. um, I want I want your Packers types in the top fifty because they have two picks in the top fifty. So you're like, okay, if I can give you these 12 to 15 guys sure. that I think at 25 and 41, they're like, they're going to take two of these guys. Give me that yeah. list. Okay. So um, this is a cop-out answer. It depends on what you think I would say about their pass rush stuff. And you've gotten into some arguments about this. Two, some some slight arguments. It's the Justice Mosqueda theory. Mm. And, and and it's you've watched now disciples of the solitary give up crazy, crazy draft capital for 240 pound pass rushers. This is the Chap Robinson conversation. Which right, which Brian basically just said again at the owners' meetings. He doesn't like to like he doesn't that. like that. Funny story, though, easily verifiable. Before he took the most Packers edge that there ever existed in the hole ever in Lucas Van Ness, he 30 visited Felix Anadike Uzama, who is a speed rusher, and he 30 visited Will McDonald the yeah. fourth, who is a speed rusher. And so that is thank God the, he didn't draft that guy. <laughs> that, yeah, but, but that is the Chop Robinson conversation. Yeah, I think it's actually also the Dallas Turner conversation, though he seems to have sort of solidified himself as edge one, you know, so is chop in the conversation? Because if you're going off of what does Brian actually like to do? He doesn't like to take offensive linemen. He hasn't taken a tackle to play tackle until round four. Now he's only been the GM since 2018 and he's had two pretty good tackles. Back to back years. Right. Right. So if we're just talking about Brian, you're really looking at pass rushers, and corners <laughs> and then that takes or 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 you know high level free safety types which this class just doesn't have unless you're talking about cooper DeGene, 
Like what you would think that he would think of a Darnell Savage, I don't see him in this. Do you think do you think Coop is a is a corner or a safety for the Packers? I think he's Micah Hyde. I yes, think you, I, I think he's a problem solver. That's that's where I am. Yeah, I just, like, sure. Put him where put him where you need him. And I think he has a better chance to hold up as an outside corner than Micah did, who played outside corner for Iowa. But I mean, if I'm bringing Cooper DeGene in tomorrow, I'm too in the actual thing that Brian Gutekunst said and has never really done, which is the interchangeability. He talked yeah. about nickel, free safety, strong safety being. Well, I think Cooper's 205, is that a huge strong safety? No, it's not. But if you're only asking him to play 15 snaps a game of box safety, you can get away with it. You can also get away with him at free safety, and I think you can get away with him at nickel. So you're right. The problem yeah. solver thing, I think, is is real. Like I think him, Nixon, and McKinney, you could do a lot of stuff with. The only guy that hasn't really proven it is Nixon. because he, my language. Nixon, he does, but, Nixon but, as, a safety, as a safety interchangeable piece. In the in the slot, but can also do some safety stuff. I'm like, give me that all day. Right. We just have no proof that he can do any safety right. stuff. I think he but, can. But go ahead. But you know, X. I mean, my God, you look at just regular old PFF, and you can have whatever opinion you want of PFF. But just go look at their player participation charting. Look at He's where everywhere. Xavier McKinney lined <laughs> up last year. Wink had him just do whatever, and and that's totally cool, by the way. But I mean, that was. That was what he did was just literally whatever he was asked. And I think Cooper can do whatever he's asked. And like I said, maybe Keyshawn is the one where there's going to be more of a learning curve, but McKinney and Cooper can just kind of do whatever. Um, I think, I think people are sleeping on how gosh darn Green Bay Packers Z Kool-Aid McKinstry actually is. Not not this, not this show, Ross. Not okay. this show. Just um I'm gonna whisper this. Brian Thomas Jr. Mm -hmm. Please continue. I mean, he Were you is. the one that said no? I think it was. I think it was Stack. I think that he was like the why not? You know, like one Christian Watson, yeah, two Christian Watson, 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 Watson better. better. Yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, looking through the rest of these guys, I mean, I think Fatanu is like everything that they. Yeah, um, just probably going to be gone. Ten picks to to sure. Early. Yep. Um, Jordan Morgan is Packers E as it gets. Graham Barton is as Packers E as it gets. People don't realize this. Cooper Beebe is actually as Packers as it gets. He's just built like the air fryer that sits on top of my kitchen counter. He hits everything for them. Job, yeah. it, and, and it has played, by the way, a full season in the Big 12 at left tackle and a full season at, in the Big 12 at right tackle and then two full seasons at left guard. Cooper Beebe just doesn't look like a Packer. He freaking yeah. is one. I think he's a center, but yeah, and, and could still be a Packer, but yeah. Right. Um, Let's see. Johnny Wilson is Packersy as it gets, and I'm one of very few people that has Johnny Wilson in his top fifty. Um, but then you know, King Sua is Packersy as heck, and frankly, so are both Peyton Wilson and Edge Cooper. They are athletic profile wise and college experience wise Packersy as it gets. I you know I think. Of the names that I just rattled off, I'd be surprised if one of them wasn't there, 25, 41, 58, something, you know, kind of in that light. The, the one guy that's really, really interesting to me because I think he fits like a, a need for them and we just know nothing because he didn't do anything is Junior Colson. Mm. And, and he is a true Mike which Edger and Cooper is kind of like a Nick Barnett. And I, I think his profile was oddly enough today's profile on the daily draft. Um, I comped edge Cooper to Nick Barnett, which is like everything about this guy in college screams will. And then the Packers just grabbed Nick Barnett and moved him to the mic in a four, three. And everybody said, what the hell are you doing? And he was awesome. basically Packers hall of fame level. Good. Yeah. You know, he was an absolute NFL. Psycho in the best possible way. Right, right, right. So, I think that that's kind of maybe your edge Cooper, but if you're just looking for like a boring Mike, if you're looking for like a hundred and six percent of what Blake Martinez gave you, I think that might be junior Colson. And, but we have no data a testing. We have no, no, we have no proof that he can oddly enough though. Like Jake Ryan, I think was a super athlete. Yeah, Blake was. Martinez was not. And and they've taken other off-ball linebacker prospects that are just kind of, yeah. Now, Quay Walker is the antithesis of eh from a testing perspective, but 
they've done kind of non super freaks inside as well. Well, Ted Thompson did. Brian Gutekinds, Oren Burks, Trey yeah. Walker has been a little bit more. I I don't I I don't remember off offhand what Isaiah McDuffie was as an athlete. He was meh, but that's the scratch and dent store. That's round yeah, six. That's day three. Yeah. So I, I think I think the one that I that I like there is the Kentucky kid. And he is Packers he as it gets, and there's a kid from Penn State that is uh Curtis Jacobs is also a freak. Trevin Wallace is the Kentucky Trevin, guy. Yeah. Yep. So, all right. Well, Ross, Cole let people Bishop. know where they can I, get. The- I, I would be remiss if I didn't at least say the two words, Cole Bishop, my guy. Oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think the Packers could draft him twenty picks higher than people expect him to go. He is a perfect, perfect, perfect fit next to Xavier McKinney. Yes. Speaking of guys that you like, problem solver. Just play him wherever, wherever you're yeah. going to play Xavier McKinney. Play Cole Bishop opposite, and you're going to be just fine. I think that would be really fun. Um, Ross, let people know where they can get the draft guide, um, and please go get the draft guide. We promoted it heavy last year um, on this show. Uh, Jake did not come to me this year and say, please promote it. So I didn't, but, um, I would have, if you'd asked, sure. But, yeah, uh, but probably, here we are. And I wanted to give you a chance to promote it. It's probably because the daily draft exists. I have a eight to 16 minute video on a draft prospect or a position group every day, except for Mondays where we do mock draft Monday. There's always a link in the YouTube description to the draft guide. Um, it's my pinned tweet. It should be Packer report the at Packer report 66, like on X, our pin tweet. It's probably Jake Morley's pin tweet. Probably Jacob Westendorf's pin tweet. If you Google Packer Report Draft Guide, I know it's the first thing that comes up because I was just <laughs> looking for the link this morning. Um, but we're super excited. Um, we've doubled our sales from last year. My goal is a thousand guides, and I think we are at in like the eight eighties or the eight nineties. Oh, let's go change that. Let's yeah. go change that. Locked on Packers fans, go go get them to a thousand. If we could sell a thousand guides, that would be. That would be truly awesome. And it. um, it's it, it's a labor of love, and uh, it's it's good. I mean, we we put a lot it into really it. It is really good. Um, I can, I I've can got, confirm. I've got a couple of feature stories in there. We've got Jake's Packer People, which has the, uh, the thresholds that everybody's been talking about on Twitter, whether you believe they're accurate or not. And then I think uh, – He Western, nailed the receivers last year. I don't know how you can yeah. think they're not accurate. Like, he went he went three for three on receivers last year. He had so five tier ones. They passed on JSN, which whatever, but I think it was like A.T. Perry was the other one, and then the other three tier ones were Wicks, DuBose, and maybe I'm missing a guy because Reed was not a tier one, but like Wicks and DuBose were tier one, and they just walked you right to like what Green Bay was going to do, and and then JSN was, well, they just decided not to do the JSN thing, which whatever, I'm happy enough with. With Lucas Van Ness yeah, we'll and we'll see, this big year for Van Ness. I'm excited to see him. Ross, appreciate the time, man. You and I are incapable of doing a quick hit here yeah. or on your show or anywhere. Um, but right. That is just fine with me. I appreciate the time, man. All right. See you, Peter. All right. Thanks to Ross for joining the show. Always great to talk to him. We'll be back on Monday. More to come here as we get you ready. For Thursday night, the NFL draft kicks off. We'll be live on Thursday night. We'll be live on Friday night. We've got our final mock, our predictive mock. I have agonized over this, but I I really like what we've landed on. So we'll get you that on Monday. Follow me on Twitter, Peter underscore Bukowski. Follow the podcast on Twitter, Locked on Packers. Um, Follow it on Instagram, Locked on Packers. Follow it on TikTok, Locked on Packers. I'm on YouTube, Locked on Packers. So you can stay Locked on Packers.